Okay. So next, what I'd like to do is do some philosophy. You guys have finished your exams. It's Monday morning. After exams, after boards, I'm so proud of you guys. I mean, this is like, you guys are, are, are absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm just going to get my other glasses. Did you sometimes wish that you had another copy of your body so you could, like, practice on yourself? Yeah. <laughs> be, like, amazing. Yeah. Like, not anything else. Just I know. That's one of the biggest yeah. struggles, I think. Yeah, those are great. Struggles going through school. What's that? Um, uh, just I'm being afraid to practice on people, so I feel like I've held myself back because I yeah. just I didn't want to hurt anybody. Sure, it makes sense. And I, I like to have somebody there, but yeah. if nobody's there, it's like none of us know what we're doing. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and that's understandable. And you know, we've been given so much fear, yes. and uh, yeah. It, yeah. It makes sense. I mean, you know what? A bad adjustment stinks, first of all. Yeah. So, you know, having somebody guide you through adjusting and where you have your own confidence, it's, it's important. And it's what every student has gone through. You're definitely not alone since 1895, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, D.D. Palmer, if you read what D.D. Palmer wrote about Harvey Lillard, B.J. made up some different things. It's changed a little bit in his story through the years. Um, but, uh, you know, if there was, I, I don't forgot which Green Book where he started saying that he adjusted Harvey Lillard at the Atlas. Um, D.D. Palmer said he was just a lad. He has no idea. He can't remember what he, I think he was 13 if we do the math. I think something like that when Harvey Lillard was adjusted the first time. Oh, really? The 13 is big. What's that? 13 is like, what do you remember? But do you remember, do you have an education of the Atlas? No. Do you? You know, where you yeah. adjusted the guy. Do you remember everything you did at 13? I don't. B.J. Palmer. Oh. I, I, let's do the math. I'm not exactly sure of that age, but uh, he said he was, D.D. Palmer said he was but a lad. I did the math once, and so we could do it again. But, uh, you know, adjusting the fourth dorsal. Um, uh, the world changed from the most important adjustment. I posed this question a couple of times. And everyone says it's the atlas and this, that, and the other. But really, it was T4. Because if that T4 wasn't adjusted in Harvey Lillard, we may not have chiropractic now. Um, Dee Dee said that uh, he did nine years of research to get to the point where he delivered that first adjustment. And I see there's a lot of, I have a, one video, it's the upper cervical video it's, it's actually it's a really good video except they tell the wrong story about Dee Dee Palmer it was a, they say it was a random act uh, he just came, went in and just racked a bone he felt it out of place and it was a surprise and whammo there was nothing by mistake there was no chance he said I did nine years of research before I delivered that first adjustment he said that in, in the book 1910 the chiropractor's adjuster the title of the book is very important, right? To adjust us back to true north. When <clears throat> most of that book is writings by other chiropractors and then Dee Dee comments on them. About really, he goes pretty in depth of uh, sort of ripping them apart, actually. There have been a lot of quotes on stages and videos that misquote Dee Dee Palmer and they're quoting the letters or writings from the chiropractor that he was correcting. Um, one of them is, uh, they, uh, what do they call that? Uh, I forget what there was, I hear it all the time now. Um, and not a subluxation, but uh, I'll think of it as soon as we stop talking about it. What's that? A restriction, they call it a... Uh, dysfunction? No. And he also, you know, when, when people talk about mental impulse, he's not, he said it's not a mental impulse. It's a vital impulse. The vital forces of the body is what we work with. A mental impulse is a saying, I want to lift my arm. That's the mental part of our body. The vital forces are working behind the scenes, our innate forces, right? A reduction. A reduction. Um, people use reduction very often. Um, even reducing a subluxation or, or there's a reduction in the system, Dee Dee Palmer went 
you know, had a, I think it was like 15 or 20 pages about how upset he was and people using that term uh, or whatever the writer was of that letter. So the reduction, that one was drives me the most crazy. Reduction? Reduction. Um, you'll hear it sometimes. You'll hear it now. You'll read it in things. People are using it because they're really misquoting 1910, the chiropractor's adjuster. But I was going to just read a couple of things. We'll start off this way and do some philosophy. You guys have all been science and studying and all those things. So today being a philosophy day, I think, is a good time for it. What do you guys think? Yes. Okay. Um, we just, like I said, we put, we have an, uh, an actress, she's reading that we have 1914 completed, D.D. Palmer's book, which it's beautiful. Um, we also have completed, evo not Evolution Revolution, that's this one, we have uh, um, uh, Fame and Fortune by B.J. Palmer, which is I think 32, I believe, somewhere around there, in the 30s. Um, so, and that one is just finished, and it's fantastic. A lot of that is really practice building. Being free to have the practice of your dreams. For me, I started off in practice, I was making house calls in the Upper East Side of Manhattan, um, walking up the hills, had my astrolite that we all adjusted on the other day, and uh, I was going uphill in this, when the, I remember when I decided I'm done, and I went and visited my mother in Florida, that's where I am now, um, it was seven degrees and sleet, and I'm walking uphill <laughs> to, to do one adjustment on like the 17th floor, and I'm thinking, man, this is, this is, this is not the way I want to be. Yeah. I'm surviving right now after, you know, getting out of school, I was living with my dad, and uh, I was near, you know, uh, Self Center in Pasquale, and my friends in New York Chiropractic Council, we go to meetings and all this stuff, it was nice, I liked it. But uh, that wasn't for me. I didn't want to live in Manhattan. There's too many people. Oh, cold. It's cold, seven degrees and sleet, you know? It was no fun. So I came down here, and it was after the hurricanes, and it was a mess down here, but it was 86 degrees. I was like, I'm staying. It's easier this way. So I'm just going to randomly, randomly open. This is Evolution or Revolution. This is 30, uh, volume 34, B.J. Palmer from 1957. This is an original, and I just got it. And I'm really excited about it. What I'm thinking, how about each one of us would just open randomly and we'll read a section, okay? So, we know, only we think, we, as we think, we know. And there is an abstract we call intelligence existing out there in that great void of space. And all that reaches matter called man and enters into the matter of man we call it mental impulses, nerve forces, which as it moves, as it moves matter, manifest products we call function, such as senses, digestion, reproduction, uh, caloforication, uh, elimination, defecation, etc. Without this abstract in matter, there would be and could not be any function producing any product of any kind. There is no sight, sound, taste, feeling, smell, or recognition of the product of motion of matter, except as matter receives vibration, records that impression, interprets them through matter. So there he's talking, the very end of that is the tone, that vibration receiving a vibratory impulse and having action chiropractic based upon tone. And they're saying now, they're reconfirming what Dee Dee Palmer said, that the tension on the nerves is really what actually causes the subluxation. Pinching doesn't actually happen. It's tension, more like tightening a, a guitar string as it pulls tension across the bridge and so on, right? So it's that tension and changing in the vibration or tone of the, of the nerve, which is really interesting. Of course, there's axoplasm in the you know, axonic impulse and all that stuff. The product can be no longer greater, can be no greater than the producer. The product may and might equal the producer as such was defined to be. Therefore, it is vitally essential that we have the intelligent abstract mental impulse or nerve force flowing into and through matter to produce products, which cause matter to live and exist coherently, cohesively, 
to produce his, his kind. Without this intelligence, mental impulse, nerve force, pulsating matter, uh, matter into productive action, cohesive continuity, and matter of man would, would disintegrate, dissolve the union back into the primitive material elements, and cease to exist as a united union of mind and matter called living man. So that's right here, page 21, we stop right there. So you can see, reading the Green Books isn't necessarily easy at times. So having this, you know, the, the woman, the actress, this is what she does, you know, it, it comes out really beautifully. <clears throat> so 1957, what's he trying to, point is he trying to get across? I really understood like you, like universal intelligence is flowing through you and you're like removing the blockages for man to flow through you. Yeah. And like if you want to create as the creator or whatever created, like you have to have that flow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you got it. What about you? <laughs> Um, how they would they talk about the vibration mm -hmm. that's a big thing because a lot of people get stuck in that like bone out of place model mm -hmm. and like how it is pinching on there but it's the nerve and the tension that's causing that subluxation mm -hmm. so that's really big and mm -hmm. that's what kind of struck a chord with me is like that's huge because we're all taught like obviously but with ed it's tone so there's like all these tone models that are now coming about along with osseous and it's just it's just really cool to See it come from that standpoint, I guess you could say. Yeah. Well, for me, uh, I I got to a lot from the vibrate vibratory aspect. How when the body responds to obviously the nerve, the tone, but I think to the vibration also, maybe the environment that the person's on, maybe is creating a certain frequency within his body and how deliberate an adjustment could help elevate that frequency or that vibration to achieve uh, the maximum expression. Mm -hmm. So, and to accomplish that, I guess the adjuster, the chiropractor should be in a very elevated frequency too to allow that that adjustment to be the, the best it can be. So mm -hmm. it, it works both ways. Mm -hmm. I think we, we gotta work on ourselves to, to, to achieve that maximum vibration. That's a powerful statement, really, absolutely. What do you think? I mean, I just said it so well. Well, yeah, that's good too. Uh, but yeah, I just think that there's, it's kind of going off the fact that it's, it's not just mechanistic. Mm -hmm. it's like You know that point too we get a lot and uh, you know I'm all for principles of chiropractic that's why we do this but when we talk about vitalistic and mechanistic that's a lot what the old guys were talking about um, vitalism and compared to mechanism that we're just taking pressure off the bone and or the nerve and you know it's a mechanical action and that's really where I think musculoskeletal stuff has gone to today but the vitalistic uh, vitalistic aspect of things it's unimaginable. We don't really know what this adjustment has done today, how it affects someone. In 30 years, their life may have changed. Spirit has guided them to a moment to receive this adjustment. All the actions that follow it, we have no idea how far-reaching the things we think, say, or do will affect the lives of millions of people. Tomorrow is what BJ said. Pasquale said, you're affecting lives now. It's not tomorrow, because tomorrow never comes. It's happening right this minute. We have no idea. You adjust someone, they might call the person at AT&T to claim, complain about their cell phone, and their just love is coming through them. You might change that person's life the other end of the phone. You might change someone's life just by, you know, a beautiful, loving smile to let them in, to come in, and you know, in traffic, or whatever it might be or just caring for a child for one second longer of a smile of love. We don't know how far reaching the things are. I always like to think about this. 
think, because that's what I'm going to talk about. The first word is think. Thoughts are things. How we're thinking is creating the reality that we're living in now. So the thoughts first, the think, say, and do, first that thinking part, how we think, say, or do will change the lives of millions. So our thinking is so absolutely important. That's why today, after all the work we've been doing, you guys just getting pumped up for, for finals and boards, today really getting grounded in our philosophy because our thinking is paramount. The clearer we are as chiropractors, and I'm not even gonna say chiropractors to be because you're chiropractors now. Because you're showing up. I mean, you guys, what did you leave at five o'clock, 5.15 this morning or something? And to be here on time, you guys were early to do what we do every day for, I mean, when did you, it's been two or three weeks now you've been coming, Gabriel? This is my fourth, fourth or fifth visit. I think it's at least five. I think you're five. Yes, yeah. because you didn't, uh, you came on Wednesday, right? Yeah. 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 So it'll be three weeks Wednesday. Yeah. And Junior came one before you. Three weeks, it's three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then he came one before we even started. He was just raring to go. And I said, no, we're starting Monday. <laughs> it was Friday. He was ready. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is it. But getting grounded in our philosophy, okay? Reading green books, breaking it down a little bit, instead of just taking it face value. I think that's very, very important. Um, getting together and reading a little green book. What did you get out of that? I got this. I got that. Or I don't know what I got. That was hard to understand. This was a lot of commas, let me tell you. And you know, and he writes every other sentence or every other word is, you know, is, you know, uh, uh, capitalized. And uh, so it's it's really interesting reading. Should we just pass this around and read a paragraph or so? Okay, here you choose yours. Oh, and it's perfect for this moment. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. This question of dependency of one person leaning upon another for mental, moral, or spiritual integrity support is based on the theory that by ourselves we can do little, if anything, but leaning on the crutches of others give us education, morals, and confidence in self. <clears throat> if this attitude were sound, we could carry it further. If one father and mother wanted a child, they should call for physical action from another father or and mother. Or if one family wanted health instead of sickness, they should seek it from other people, never from within themselves or in the terms of medicine. We should rely, we should rely upon drug inject, injections, antibiotics from outside in below outward. We need go no further than within to con confineness of oneself to secure confidence, moral health, life. In cases of religions, however, we step backwards into antiquity, 2,000 years, and seek everything we think we want and need, ask for it, pray for it, in the name of a deity. And it will come running merely because we recite what we want and it will fall into our laps with little little or no action upon our part. There's like a point. Should we stop? Sure. Okay. If you want to. You choose. It's up to you. That was a lot. That was a lot there. Okay, let's, let's talk about it in a second then. Yeah. It's like that, that, that you don't need anything from the outside. Everything, you have it within you. Mm -hmm. So that's what I got. That's great. I have that statement right there in my adjusting room. Everything you need is already in you. And, you know, trusting that in chiropractic, when we, we, I don't remove the subluxation. I'm able to add a force, adjust. The body does what it needs to with that and moves the subluxation, removes that, does with the right thing at the right time. And even adjusting our systems within, the nerve system is able to do what it's meant to do. But I can't tell it, I want your back pain to go away. Heart disease, whatever it might be, I don't want to point that to anyone. Let me re retract that from you. But we can't dictate it, nor can we get it from anyone outside of us. Now, I believe in the power of prayer, but that is that 
energy within us telling the body, God, the kingdom of heaven is within, I am ready to be healed. Today is the day. And actually, Sigafoos helped us realize this, and Pasquale. He used to say the same thing. You don't beg for it. Ask for it and move on. That's what he used to say. You want something, you ask for it, you move on. You expect that to happen. If you're praying for the same thing or asking for the same thing over and over again, you didn't expect it to happen to begin with. There's no faith. There's no faith in that. Exactly. So that was a good one. I, that was very interesting. Anybody else want to mention anything? Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, the whole, like, say it once and move on because... A lot of like um, spiritual people say, you know, you need to uh, visualize something happening. And, you know, you spend time doing that. But usually they'll say, you know, when you go to bed, do it, do that. But they don't say just do it one night. So it's like you got to stick with it. But that's very different from sticking with it. That's just mm -hmm. saying like one time. I expect it to happen. It's expect it, it, it's the ask it like if it's already done, basically. Mm -hmm. Ask it like if it's already done, and yeah, you're doing. You're allowing it to happen to you. You're not putting any resistance to it. Instead of asking, please, God, um, I want, or please, God, help me to achieve health. No. You're saying that you don't have health in that moment. Say, thank you, God, for the health. That I have already. That I have. That's something you could say over and over again. Yeah. If you, for example, had, let's say, heart disease or something, and then you're like, you know, thank you for healing me, but you said that every night. That's... That's not. I mean, that's that's affirmation. That's, aff that's affirmation. It can be an affirmation. But it's like the for part. Like, thank you for, or please give us. I don't know. Like you're you're seeing it as it's not happened. You just have to change to see it as if it's already happened. It's already happened. Because usually people will ask. So you said it even better than what people say. Because usually people say, "I don't want to be sick," or "I right. don't want to be broke." They're not telling you what they want. They're telling you what they don't want. So they're not asking for really for what they want. Even that. So sometimes even that little twitch. You know that those in the science of mind and and uh, all those philosophies. Really, that's the important thing. Is I don't want to be sick. You're focusing on being sick, not being well. I don't want to be poor. I'm focusing on being poor, not being wealthy. So those, that's, that's the mentality and the vocabulary. You're absolutely on target. Sigafoos taught us those things. And it's, it's not necessarily chiropractic philosophy, but it's abundance philosophy. Yeah. That's but the way I look the, at it. What, what would be the better option is to say, I am healing and I feel great versus I am healed. You know, they, they say, a lot of people say both of those things kind of interchangeably, but one sounds like if you say you're healing, it means you're not. That's healed. right. So you would say, I'm healed. Yeah, thank you for my great health. Yeah. And believe it with every cell of your body. There have been numerous people that have, you know, told those stories of uh, of healing and health while they were currently healing and and in pain and all those things as their body was was changing the way it was meant to do. But being it has already done. Thank you for healing my wound, whatever it might be, for the great health that I have, for the health of my family, not. I wish it to happen, it has happened. So with authority, really saying it, believing it, it has happened. And we're going to go... This is like the second part. Okay, go ahead. Okay. As well think educationally that we should have faith and believe in aid from another to help us digest food, urinate or defecate, or functional, functional activity in our body matter. As to think educationally, we must look to and depend upon antiquity for guidance spiritually, for aid and comfort which we can and should give ourselves from within ourselves, and then conduct others outside ourselves with if we don't get it. Like blame. Yeah. You didn't heal me. I'm not better because of you or whatever it might be. And you get that coming in the office. My back still hurts. Ah. Like your back's going to hurt until it's safe for it to not hurt anymore. Your body's got to do the healing. It's not up for me to get you better. I'll help you. I'll adjust you. Your body still has to do the work. Making that clear to people, you realize they've been in a whole different paradigm than that. One thing, when you were reading that, 
I have been saying it for years, and I may have not said it lately, that the philosophy that people are talking about now in many different books from Wayne Dyer to, you know, whoever, you know, um, it's Deepak Chopra, everyone, it's already in our green books. Yeah. It is chiropractic philosophy. We have such a depth of philosophy, it's just amazing. The more we read it, and having you guys here, because I would have read my, my paragraph myself, and I would have had that, but having more of it now, I'm really excited about it. Okay, that was great. Thank you for adding that part. So one thing that I'd like to add is the beginning of when it talked about like not trying to do this by yourself. Yeah. And that's exactly what this circle is. Mm -hmm. Like so we're, yeah, all, right. we're all yeah. here because we want some sort of guidance or mentorship or just the community of it. So that's what I got from this. Oh, trying absolutely. to do this by yourself is hard. Right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. All right. Your principles come from correct fundamental principles from above, above, downward, inside out. Money does not produce right thinking. All of great and new principles have come from the from poverty-stricken original thinkers, who struggled, who struggled and fought to prove they did what old principles could not do. Or if they did some some things in part, the new accomplished more. Through the ages, medicine has said in principles, in principle and practice, the cause of all disease is outside. It must come inside from outside, from below upward. Therefore, the cure must come from outside in, below from below upward. They have said that they have said that that which has administered from outside, stimulated or inhibited disease inside, to force a change from sickness outside to force health in. No credit ever was given in medicine to anything inside doing what was needed to get well. Notwithstanding, every MD has always said nature cures, give nature time. They have said that for every external force, abnormal action, for every external force to action, there was always an internal reaction. Therefore, the external drug was given to force an internal change, which they hoped would be for the better. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I just heard something recently. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, people talk about uh, medicine as an outside force that's, you know, going to fix something, but people don't people when they hear that they don't think oh well it's actually just assisting my body and doing what it needs it's not doing something separate from it it interacts in your body it's not like it's a foreign thing it goes in there it takes something and then it leaves it's like it goes in there it works with your body in a certain way to do what it needs to do and then it leaves so i think people think of medicine as being separate and not interacting with your body it just goes through your body and goes out does what it does and goes out without you know, all your cells contributing to its action. So that's, that's kind of what I took from that. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Wow. Anybody? I, I have a little input on that one. Yeah, go for it. I heard, this was a few years ago, um, I don't remember what television program it was, they were talking about medicine, and uh, when they first met the shaman and medicine men in the jungle, and I think it was Brazil or wherever it was, and they were talking to them about whatever medicine they were looking for that they heard about. And they were talking about the spirits in the plant. It was the spirit in the plant that helps so-and-so with it, helps a person with this. Not this one molecule we break down and try and isolate. It's this one thing. But it's the spiritual nature, the living thing that's animating this plant itself that heals. It's not the molecule. And we're trying to break everything down in a scientific way and leaving that spirit part out of it. But it's the spirit in the tree that helps them heal. I think I, that's what I thought of when you were reading that, is this the spiritual nature of chiropractic. We can make a bone move, but where we are grounded through spirits, that spiritual nature of chiropractic. Chiropractic is the one that's the energy just even saying the word chiropractic has an energy delivering chiropractic being grounded in chiropractic um, i don't remember who it was that said the adjustment 
why is it so much different? Someone's adjusted me. Nora, I think, did it. People have adjusted me like that so many times. Why does it feel so much different? And really, it's us being grounded in chiropractic. I adjusted her. I feel I'm grounded in chiropractic. I know what I know what I know. And more than I know, the more I realize I don't know. But I allow spirit to come in. It's a spiritual adjustment. I'm grounded in the philosophy the philosophies and principles of chiropractic. That something extra is what BJ will read about and will talk about in the future. That's what something extra is in chiropractic. But that's what I was thinking about was a spirit in the plant. There's a, sorry, um, someone once told me that kind of going back to you, is it's, it's not the leash between you and the dog, it's who's holding the leash. So like you being grounded, that's, so it's like, it's not the technique that you use or the certain adjustment that you do it's good to have a sturdy leash you know not afraid and wanting to get tear apart at any time but to have that clarity to have that groundness to be resonating at a higher level to have that interaction with someone so that our innates connect so they can heal because many people just kind of go around like, the, like you're the technician yeah and you're just pounding on high spots and then no one gets better because there's no real connection between that from human to human it's just a a body. Yeah. You hit on something so big about the technician. In my heart, um, my father was a, a uh, he was one of the founding members of the Society of Internal Medicine in, in London. Um, he, you know, he was, he loved being a doctor, old school doctor actually. And when he was dying at Sloan Kettering in New York, supposed to be the greatest, you know, cancer doctors in the world, his sat, the saddest moment I just saw in his eyes when he said there is no such thing as a doctor anymore. They're all just technicians. It's just, that's it. And just sad. A technician is not, I want to be technically good at what I do, but a technician is nothing. Pressing a button, adjusting, forcing a vertebra into submission, really, that's not an adjustment, it's a manipulation. So to be technically good is one thing, but to be a technician, you know, anybody can pull a switch, jam a bone, whatever it might be, scrape them with a metal knife and put some tape on someone. That's not being a chiropractor. You had something so big on that. My, my first encounter with adjustment or adjusting, I live with, I live with two naturopaths, and he was the first person who told me that if you're bones are in place, you will heal faster. And he used the activator. He learned, because naturopaths are not allowed to adjust, but he learned this from and everything that helped people, he would use. And there was this one, I'm just glad that I experienced it, because this was this one kid that in a car accident, for three months he had been receiving uh, physical therapy. <coughs> Lasers, core therapy, what, you name it. But didn't get well, he ended up in, in this guy's farm with a lot of pain. So the guy adjusted him with the activator, but at the end, the guy could only lift his arm like this. He was still in pain at the end of the adjustment. And he was like, wait a second, stay there. He scratched his head, he just paused for a second, and he went to his foot, he went to his foot. He pressed the bone in his foot, he said like, try to raise your arm right now. The guy was like, he went with the activator, boom, boom. He didn't have any reasoning behind it. He told me, I cannot tell you. Received a message. I cannot mm -hmm. tell you anything right now. <laughs> he, he, he told me, actually, I cannot teach you everything at once because then you'll leave. So, yes. <laughs> but, but it was, uh, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And what science it is going to explain to us right now with the knowledge and anatomy that we have? I don't think the person doesn't care if he gets a scientific explanation. The guy felt better. That's it. That's all. Yeah. He functioned better. He fun even better. He, well, he was functioning better from that. Function better. He functioned wow. extremely. Yeah. He, could, yeah. he could have full range of motion. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was amazing. That's beautiful. Yeah. Just wanted to share that. Question of dependency of one person leaning upon another for mental. You did. 
Look at you guys are connected. Oh, do we have to read so, it again? No, no, no. <laughs> right, so, somehow, as we read here, the circle of faith, you seemingly missed one dominant contrast that it is a straight line from outside in below upward between these two approaches, calling the inner man God. There is Chagny, Helen, Pope Pius, Albert, Christ, or whatever other name you will. They caught the greater understanding that within them was something greater than what the ordinary run of the mill man has been educated not to find. I really didn't, I didn't say that like uh, before, that we're like adjusting to allow the body to correct itself. We're not like the med medicine is looking for an outside cure. There's no outside cure. There's just removing the blockages for the, that person to heal. It's like the body is telling you what's going on in a perfect way. Like if you have low back pain, then what does that signify? Like we were talking that when someone has a pain, they just take a pill to like shush that pain. And you're not really doing anything. You're just it's having a fire in your house and just taking the fire, like fire alarm out. You're not really addressing the problem. You're telling the body to shut up and the body is telling you something's like going on. Or, the body is giving you a message right there. It's telling you we're, we're just out of balance or what did that mean for you? Like she said, yeah. like what is the educated parts of a big one in that one coming from our educated and especially coming out of school too. You have if and then, okay, if is this, it must be that. And uh, you know, the deeper you get into, you know, adjusting in the longer term, you realize it doesn't always work that way. E. Javen mentions it, and I forget what book it was. You'll have someone come in with one thing, it went away magically, one adjustment. You'll see it again, maybe five adjustments the next time. You see another one, it doesn't go away at all from that same adjustment. Because we are, we are A, we're not all the same. We don't know what's causing that. If we have to always think of cause and effect, I have no idea. It may be, we, I, we told stories earlier about, you know, breakup and back pain. I had, I broke up with a, a girlfriend years and years and years ago, and uh, my low back hurt so badly because of it, and I knew what it was. It was emotional. Um, what are people really going through? We don't know. Sometimes when we talk about shoulders, the weight of the world on their shoulder, whatever, it could be millions of different things. You want to read more of that? Or finish the Go ahead. At times and in places, there was a sentence or two where you almost had this understanding that other men and women had who found their greatness inside themselves, the same as many others in history, and it was this common likeness that they found in themselves which made them see it in others. Some of these sentences show you were trying to say what we think and hope we have said here. With that with that you had said more of it in each personality you visited, saw, talked with, who had found that which you were seeking to find from them, which they found in themselves. This seemingly new out this seemingly new old outlook to many, an old new outlook to the few may seem most radical, but it is natural, normal, common sense, simple and simple the awareness path all men have trodden who move worlds. When it is radical only to those conservatives who prefer to sit idly by, idly by and twiddle their thumbs, who have no desire or interest in wanting to improve the status quo of the suffering masses who so badly need being shaken loose. Get up and be a doer, right? Start, start changing the world being, knowing your being first, of where we are grounded in chiropractic and we can change this planet. You know, people, if we're, if we're afraid, you know, it's stepping across that threshold of fear. Sometimes opening our mouth. There's times I felt I've just held back, I should have said something. But, you know, and sometimes maybe I've said too much. But really just stepping over our thresholds of what we think we are to who we should be. And like we said before, it's already inside of us. We just have to let that tiger loose. Yeah. 
so complex when it really all comes down to just connecting and adjusting that person. As you can see in this office, there is nothing but tables. And that's all there needs to be. The people that make it complex don't believe in it. You know, like we, he's talked about a couple times, like we, when you talk too much, you talk people out of it. When people start doing too much, you talk them, you basically are doing too much and they're like, this isn't what I signed up for or I don't even know what I'm signing up for because there's so much muddiness in what chiropractic is today that people don't see it clear so when there is just five tables all right this guy's a chiropractor i know where i'm i know what i'm getting here that's what i got from uh, it for me it's, now that you say that is so when i look with the natural back they, they have a different approach to in terms of like the tools they use but the philosophy is the same. The body does the healing. So they, they were just vehicles, honestly. And he told me the same thing. It's like, if they will give a plant as a remedy, they will just give you one, two, three plants, combine them, that's it. You don't, don't over give supplements, don't give too much pills. Sometimes I, I, I remember people coming in for the worst things and they didn't even talk about that. They, they, they did not talk about, they did not say the word cancer, they did not say the word whatever it was. They just say something brought you here or some part of you thought that it was wise to come here. You, you're being guided, your, your body's doing what it needs to do. And God or whatever, they, they were very religious, but whatever it was, they will make the people, the people like aware that something, a decision they have made or something that had happened in the past might have contributed to, to where they were, but now they were gonna take a, a different route. They were going to a better place. And I was, they kept it simple. Like that, that's the thing, they kept it very simple. They, and some people think it's like too simple. Oh no, that's too simple, that won't work. Yeah. Like what, no, this is like, works yeah that little thing that little thing <laughs> it's tremendous mm -hmm. that's right yeah, I, I always say this I don't like to use the word advice because adding to people's vices and reinforcing their cancer and reinforcing their back pain you know really hey you're healthy your body's doing something wonderful that's the first thing I even say when I do a, a scan I say your body is really doing something right we're not cursing your body Everything is meant to happen right now. Your body is doing something wonderful, even though it stinks, it might not feel good, but it's protecting you. So, yeah, that's really, that's powerful stuff, really, for people. But adding to vices, I don't like that. You know, that's what the whole world is. You're depressed, let's give you more depression. Let me give you more depression drugs on top of those depression drugs, and whatever it is. So, yeah, you touched on something really important there. I think this just opens to this, this question of dependency of one person leading It's an important <laughs> one. It's an important <laughs> one. I knew I missed something. <laughs> no, this is about kidneys specifically. Should I change that? Well, whatever is right for you. There's sure, there's surely wisdom in there somewhere. Kidneys are my favorite organ, I have to say, because they're, they're, they're genius in them. Does it have to do with um, forgiveness? anger, mm -hmm. forgiveness, kidney stones, anger, uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful organ, interesting when you say that. There's a book that actually a medical doctor wrote, and it's like the emotional cause behind the disease, so it, it has like a lot of conditions, and you can like look it up, and it even has for the back, like mm -hmm. T1. Heard it, cool, yeah, it's interesting. Louise Hay has one too, but you can yeah. hear your life. Yeah. Hers is really good. She's the one that mentions anger and kidney stones because they had a centimeter-sized kidney stone. Yeah. 
<laughs> a lot of anger, man, let me tell you. <laughs> but I worked it out and uh, passed out the, the one they said they would never, you would never be able to pass that out. And uh, I did, but with the help of an herbalist who helped it, lift it shrink, I got it adjusted, I got myself adjusted, and my body healed. You ready? Yeah, this is similar, but I think a lot of the things I'm finding in here go along the same thoughts as we've been talking about. It has been wise, wisely said, there is nothing new under the sun. In his search for mental development and physical applications, man has become so saturated with fixed ideas, <clears throat> making arbitrary, artificial, fluctuating deviations that he cannot think straight on new principles, nor can he cut loose from old ones to see the value of something new that might oppose old conclusions, especially if the new principle is in opposition to everything that he thought he knew. Examples use of electricity over kerosene, law of aerodynamics over law of gravitation, airplanes oppose law of physics, atomic radar age, innate intelligence in man as the all great, all important restoring factor in getting sick people well. So just, just saying people can't, can't allow new ideas to kind of get fixed in their own what they know. Most new methods or new principles are in opposition to old methods of old principles, such as chiropractic is radically different from medicine. Too often man becomes so deeply steeped and rooted in some subjects that he cannot see the oncoming evolution without going through a revolution within his thinking process. Good morning. Thanks for picking that up, Alexandra. <laughs> Are you spying on me? Of course. <laughs> um, you know, the earth is flat. No, it's round, right? Um, we get stuck in, you know, not believing in chiropractic because it's a new thought. Ah, oh, it's, I bet people tell me, oh, it's just hocus pocus or it's it's just pixie dust. I, just, man, I have a lot of people who've said, that's just pixie dust. I said, look, if I had actual pixie dust and I could heal people and it would work, I would help them if I could. You know, I would use it, but I don't, and it doesn't exist. I know how to adjust a vertebra, and your body heals itself, right? Um, that's the whole thing, being open-minded, being able to be free of the confines of what we have gone through for thousands of years. Um, and since human existence, and we haven't gotten healthier, we've gotten sicker with the more junk that we've put in and trying to find the logic in things, right? So that was, there was a lot in that statement, really, that I think I got to chew on a little bit. But it's like, when the earth is flat, now we have things that allow us to see that, no, the earth is not flat. But the first person who said that the earth was not flat was killed. Or, well, now we have whatever. Excommunicated from the yeah. church or whatever. <laughs> Biology. Oh, the person that said to other doctors, we should wash our hands because pregnant ladies don't die when we wash our hands. He was killed. It was like something so simple. So if I'm telling you that this works, maybe I don't have the way to prove it to you that it works now, but maybe in a hundred years I will. It's like you can't really scratch it out if it works. <laughs> happen though it does happen. I have to yeah. say they get scared yeah. you know it's uh, like oh my gosh what was that and they've done all they've lived in another paradigm yeah. I always had this analogy people think they're at the ceiling of their health they're all the way up here and there's nowhere left to go and then all of a sudden you glimpse, give them a glimpse glimpse that they're really just at the beginning you know you're at the floor and there's so much more that this is safer right the turtle in your shell 
So it does happen. You'd be very surprised. It's well, interesting. Usually the first people that discover something are called only pretty. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> well, look where we are now compared to what Dee Dee yeah. had to deal with yeah. and all those other chiropractors. Look where we really are now. Yeah. You know, people are trying to steal chiropractic and change it to where they are because, you know, I still can't see that vision what Dee Dee Palmer saw or BJ. So, yeah, it's, it's out of fear most of the time. It's just amazing. Anybody else? Hi, Alexandra. Hi, I'm going to stop this now, okay? <laughs> so does anybody mind? I'm going to post this on our DE uh, page as well, too, and Palm, Palmer's as well, okay?